Hytale just dropped a huge update, and I mean huge in more ways than one, finally revealing what they've been up to over the last year, breaking down their work on the new engine, adventure mode, their multiplayer hub, and what's next for the game. After deciding way back in 2021 to overhaul the fundamental tech behind Hytale in order to meet the larger expectations of players and creators, the team got to work, even bringing in a development partner to assist them in order to finish their new custom engine. So throughout 2023, they've been merging their creative, design, and technical efforts to be singularly focused on delivering Hytale to the players, stating they have now started prototyping and playtesting adventure content, player movement, creative tools, creature AI, and combat of course, which we've covered before. They've also doubled down on ways to personalize your character, called an avatar, which I know will definitely excite some players. Specifically though, Hypixel mentioned that they took advantage of the extra pre-production period that they had due to the engine overhaul in order to re-explore Hytale's adventure mode, adding a whole new wave of extra details in the meantime. And I imagine, just like with me, the term pre-production there startles you a bit or raises concerns, as back in 2021 when this big decision was announced, many of us believed the game was much closer to release back then, at least in production, and we'll definitely touch more on that later. Throughout the redevelopment, the team have been giving us as much as they can in regards to teases, new biomes, and reintroducing the vision for Hytale with things like the new advanced building tools, more sophisticated VFX, and revamped UI that they've more recently showcased. But we We've yet to see that brand new engine. The team confirmed that while initially they partnered with someone to help redevelop the engine, now all of that work is being done in-house, within Hypixel. Which does make me curious as we had initially heard that the team behind Riot Forge were the ones that were assisting with this. Now it sounds like the bulk of the work has been done and it's been passed on to the Hypixel team themselves. They of course had their first external test of the game's combat and movement mechanics earlier this year, and they even said that more public tests will be on the way soon, but I would take that line with a grain of salt. This likely doesn't mean beta testing, at least not yet. This is more early tests and preliminary stuff before they start thinking about alphas and betas. In 2023, they've really aimed to staff their team so that they're quote, ready for 2024, as it'll no doubt be a pivotal, if not the penultimate year of development for Hytale before it releases. So let's talk about the elephant in the room, the new engine. Because yes, with that, it means that they need to port all of the stuff that they made on the old engine over to the new one. That includes everything from world generation, mob AI, all of the creator tools, and not just systematically either. The big thing is ensuring that Hytale looks and feels like it did on the old version. They still want to give us the Hytale we know and love, it would be crazy if it just didn't look like the trailer anymore, but of course with changing the foundation of the game, there are bound to be a few differences and a few technical issues with getting them to look similar. The team want to ensure they match our prior expectations, which was set by the gameplay they've released up to this point. Hypixel say they're looking forward to sharing a side-by-side -side comparison with our old engine when we're ready. The reason we haven't seen any up until now is because they've been focusing on performance and functionality over making the game look exactly how we're expecting it to. They say they will share some of this mid-development footage once they're out of the current phase they're in, but doing that right now would be like shooting themselves in the foot. They're in a kind of awkward awkward, self-conscious phase, anything they release now will have a huge number of eyes judging it. So they do not want to show the game again until the engine is finished. But because they're a great development studio, in the meantime, they still really want to keep us updated and for us to understand that progress is being made. Hytale isn't in development hell, or at least not anymore. With luck, they are close to done with the new engine and will be ready to show that new gameplay soon. As they did promise, we will be getting more blog posts in 2024. The new engine reveal really is acting like a bit of a floodgate right now, holding back all the cool things the team want to show us, and once they do finally pop the bottle, there will be a lot more blog posts to follow. With the full team now moving over to the engine, they need to bring all the extra stuff they've been working on in the Legacy Engine over with them. For now, we're given an update art piece of Orbis, the world the adventure mode takes place in, which we can now actually compare to the design we got over four years ago, and as we can see, the geography of the realm has certainly changed a little, with the fiery wastes of Zone 4 now seemingly on a separate island, and the snowier Zone 3 regions similarly so. We do know that they've changed up the structure of the zones a little bit, but the main continent still seems to have 
the same pattern of climate. Hot in the south, cold in the north kind of thing. We know Orbis itself, this realm or world or Ultiverse as the team call it, was created by Gaia, a seemingly important godlike figure in the story who is nowhere to be found as of modern times. We actually know from the team that lore-wise, Gaia is intended to just be another player, an avatar like you or me. Orbis in its entirety being just one example of a player-created world, a whole story built from the ground up by Gaia herself. In my opinion, a metaphorical representation of the Hytale team. Hypixel remind us that we will be given access to these very same tools, the very same tools they've been using to make the adventure mode itself. Orbis and the story mode we play there is really just a baseline, an example of what's possible with the tools that come with Hytale. You have the ability to create an entirely new world, a completely different experience to their story of Orbis, and then go off and share it on the platform, open it to other avatars, their hope being that this spawns a web of worlds, a cosmos of creativity. And no, I'm not just getting poetic there. That, that's the name of the image when you copy the URL on the blog post. So back to the blog post. Specifically, Hypixel have revised a number of factions, expanding each race's role in the game, as well as their capabilities and deep backstories. They go on to provide a significant example of that next with something that really excites me, the newly designed Quebec Tree Singer. For reference, because it's been a long time since we mentioned these guys, here is what we knew as an old Quebec stage or Tree Singer in the past. Tree Singers have an important role in the Quebec villages, as they are, quote, tale tellers and respected leaders. They're responsible for passing down the wisdom of the ages to each new generation of little seedlings by singing. However, this role can't be taken on without a sacrifice. Under normal circumstances, older Quebecs will eventually find a place to root into the ground and grow into a sleepy tree known as an elder. In this form, they sleep for incredibly long periods of time as the village goes on and grows around them. Assumedly, they wake up from time to time, who knows what they'll say though. But tree singers are a bit of a deviation from this Pokemon reminiscent evolution tree. Tree singers specifically differ in that they actually resist the transformation into a tree and in doing so become a kind of in-between for the sleeping elders and the younger Quebecs. Able to move and share stories through song for much longer periods of time and across generations. A bridge between past and future. After working through a few iterations, the artists and designers settled on a larger, more ponderous version of a wise old Quebec. Specifically, this concept art resonated with the team and inspired the final reinterpreted model. Apparently, the story in this image is that the tree singer was resting for a bit too long and ended up getting rooted to the ground, needing to pull itself free. So it seems like tree singers have to actively resist the urge to turn into a tree, and perhaps when they get super, super old, they kind of just fall asleep. I honestly really like this replacement, and while I have a really soft spot for that older Quebec design and wouldn't mind it showing up again at some point in the lineage. In this GIF, we have a look at the three primary stages of a Quebec life cycle. The seedling into the Quebec into the tree singer. Of course, we still have the younger Quebecs, the sleeping elder trees, and we may even see a version of that old and bearded Quebec as the regular stage begins to progress into its final form. We've also yet to see any leaf ranges too. I mean, what are they? Are they going to look different? Are they going to have a different form? It's, it's kind of interesting to think about. The visual we get here has been on loop on my screen for like 10 minutes now, just taking in all the details of something new feels so good and it's such a relief to finally get the blog post. Honestly, the new tree singer design is really detailed. The leaves specifically and how they sway, even the facial movements hint to mobs being a lot more animated and characteristic than they were previously. Note the Quebec's hair flopping as he runs. It actually varies in how intense it flops too for more of a random look. And each seedling even has a different running animation one doing like a little Naruto run there. It all makes them look really varied, a mischievous little bunch. Honestly though, I think this redesign was pretty neat. While I feel it's weird because we've known the old version for so long, the game isn't out yet, so stuff like this can still happen. I mean, imagine this guy up against a Trork or even a Yeti. Redesigning the Tree Singers also led the team to reevaluate how Quebecs build things like their homes and equipment. A long-standing theory of mine was that Quebecs actually have the ability to use music to heal or grow things. And the team confirmed that tree singers will in fact use music to encourage plants to grow into helpful shapes, which also explains how we see giant tree houses hollowed out to live inside almost purposely grown that way. 
This eventually led to the team's concept of Sungwood, which in my opinion sounds really, really cool. Specifically, Sungwood is wood that is grown by a tree singer. It's ornate, special wooden material, which can be used in all facets of Quebec culture, such as clothing, weapons, and of course, redesigning village structures. They go on to tease further that this is just one very small example of a much larger creative push that they'll be revealing lots more of in the months to come. All the factions have undergone re-evaluation, and this is isn't even the only new kind of Quebec. On the multiplayer side of things, the team touched on what will be the hub of Hytale Online, now officially named The Capital. It will be a shared space and the heart of all social play. I'll be honest, this next part is a lot all at once, so we will break it down. But Hypixel say, this is where players from all parts of Hytale come together to make friends, share experiences, compete in mini games, discover new adventures, seek challenges, trade, show off pets and companions, and more. Wow. Okay. So we know there will be a friend system. Shared experiences is quite general. We already know about the various mini games that we'll see in this hub as we've seen signs alluding to them for years now. These are all things that were advertised way back in the trailer. However, what is new are things such as discovering new adventures, potentially alluding to even more immersive experiences, or even branching worlds that are player made. Seek challenges then suggests more of the competitive and grinding nature there may be to some experiences, something similar to Hypixel Skyblock or leagues with Within the mini games themselves. They then said trade and show off pets and companions. Pets and companions are exciting, we've heard them discussed a bit before by John and we know the team really wants to avoid pay to win with those types of things, so I imagine these will be mostly cosmetic unlockables and purchasable from the capital itself. Next is trading, which is a great keyword to hear because it suggests a player economy, at least as far as Hytale Online goes. This won't exactly be where you can just hop out of one of your adventure worlds and bring in items to trade in the capital. Capital, not things like boss drops or random stacks of blocks, I think this means trading player-made cosmetics, maybe trading pets or things you've earned in the capital itself, user-generated items and custom emote animations, for example. And things open up even more when you imagine that this suggests custom player-made servers can have trading too, meaning server owners can create and manage their own economies. The art we get of the capital looks stunning, truly fantastical, and I think when we finally do get to see it in-game, the design will have come a long way from the initial area that we've grown so used to looking at in clips. While we don't have an in-universe location for this capital as of yet, I do feel a theory coming on. If it is the homeworld and gathering place for all avatars, and Gaia was also an avatar, who's by the way been largely theorized to have originated from this altiverse from the concept art, then the capital could be on Numdrasil, it being a kind of sentient origin point for the community of all the avatars. The team described the capital as a testament to all things that avatars have built and achieved in the past, and looks ahead to the exciting things they'll do in the future. This sentence was initially tricky to interpret, but I'm pretty sure they could either be referring to how the capital will feature different player creations or worlds, similar to a front page like Roblox has, but in the game itself, or it could mean that players can impact the capital itself both its looks and story elements, perhaps even being able to see and possibly vote on upcoming game features. Primarily, of course, its aim is to be an area that celebrates what the Hytale community is up to at the moment. Genuinely, I think that they could be taking a page out of Fortnite's book and potentially adding a story or narrative or evolving landscape to the capital. Perhaps we'll see buildings being constructed or entire bosses show up that we have to all team up to defeat. So with that all said, what are the next steps? Well, you may be concerned with the lack of gameplay and showcasing of the new engine in this blog. And don't get confused, as optimistic and joyous as I may sound about this update, I am a bit disappointed that we didn't get to see more as are many in the community. For some, it is just flat out annoyance, but for others, it's more a frustrating acceptance that this is just how it is, that we simply aren't going to get Hytale tomorrow. That engine being finished and then being able to preview it would have been a great end to the year, but unfortunately for us who are eagerly waiting, as mentioned earlier, they only get that moment once, that moment to reveal the engine and open the floodgates to all the crazy new things they want to show, and clearly they're serious about that time being perfect. They've been working on this project since 2015, that's almost a decade of build-up and they're not going to blow it or slip up, they're biding their time and making very calculated moves. Remember they do not owe us anything, let's not pressure them to show something that is unfinished, which may even end up impacting the public's perception of the game in the wise words of Woody, let them cook.
Hypixel say they're really looking forward to 2024. Over the next few months, the whole team will be onboarded into the new engine, and then they'll be set to significantly ramp up playtesting as they collect feedback on all aspects of the game, from adventure and creative tools to social and competitive play as they port it all over. While it may be frustrating to many, these tests are vital to helping the team. They're creating next-generation stuff here. But I know a few eyebrows will certainly be raised as the team mentioned that these tests, which are still to be conducted, will be an important step in getting ready to enter full production. At a glance, this looks really bad. Hytale hasn't even entered full production? In fact, they've still got steps to take to be ready for that? Some will say this looks like development hell, or even a problem of feature creep, and I did as well when I first read this. I genuinely broke a little. But remember, they did have to go back and redevelop the engine. And prior to that, they had to reevaluate their whole game plan when they were bought by Riot Games after the huge wave of unexpected attention that the trailer got, which again, they didn't plan for. This meant that for a few years, they've unfortunately been hopping back and forth between planning, pre-production, and production. We need to accept that we aren't going to be playing the same Hytale that the team initially set out to make. Yes, they always had high ambitions, but with Riot's acquisition and the engine overhaul, the scope is so huge now that they can't afford to go back to the drawing board again. Once they begin these tests, they can make an accurate projection for the release date and they will tell us. Their transparency in this blog post is really reassuring. It shows that they are at least confident. They're telling us all of these details because they trust us and it really is foot on the pedal from here. Quote, you can expect our updates to grow in frequency as we move into this next phase of Hytale's development, particularly when we're in a position to once again show off in-engine gameplay. John Hendricks, the game director who wrote this blog post, confirmed afterwards that this does in fact mean that there will be more reveals and blog posts, surely with that floodgate opening sooner rather than later. Again, you have to understand that Hytale isn't a game. Despite me calling it that for many years for ease of understanding, you'll often find the team refer to Hytale as a project. I'll even sometimes call it an engine or a platform instead, and that's because it is just that. It really aims to facilitate the trifecta of what makes a great gaming ecosystem. The experience, the creative, and multiplayer. As said before, Orbis, all of its land, all of its mobs, everything we've seen about the adventure, their story which they've crafted for Hytale is just one example example of a game world you can create with tools within the engine itself. That's a big undertaking, which the team seemingly intends to get perfect. And Riot Games has bet millions on that. There's a bunch more to discuss, so subscribe for that. Let me know your thoughts. Hytale Thankmas is live on this channel December 9th, and thanks as always for watching Quebec Corner. Stay safe and keep free.